It's part of our pop culture to give animals human personalities and talents. Good boy, good boy. Movies and cartoons are filled with talking creatures who basically act like people, but they've got feathers or fur, from Donald Duck to Alvin and the Chipmunks. And when it comes to our own pets, it's awfully tempting to imagine that they have human thoughts and feelings. But researchers have always been skeptical about animal intelligence. After all, we humans speak and write and build spaceships and solve puzzles. Yet animals, well, they're just not that accomplished. Yet recently, as we test more animals and try to reveal the way they think, we've come up with some surprising results. And these days, one of our star pupils is the one animal who may know us the best. She's a wonderful little dog. She is something special. She's really smart, and we have this connection. She is extremely intelligent. I think that she is very much like a person. Yeah. Oh. I think Tucker understands me more than anyone else. Plenty of dog owners have always said their dogs were smart. But animal researchers are just starting to catch on. One, two, three. New discoveries are showing that our best friend is smarter than they ever thought. Good job. And behind those big brown eyes lies a brain that resembles ours in ways we never imagined. There. John Pilly, a come chipper 82-year-old, come by, come by, come by, started working with dogs as a psychology professor. Walk up, walk up here, walk up, walk up. Now, he's got one of the smartest dogs around. Come on, come on, girl. Come and on. I've come to check out what she can do. Good girl. Chaser is a six-year-old female border collie, the a breed dog. famously skilled at herding sheep. She was born to live in the Scottish mountains. Chase. Tunnel, tunnel, tunnel. And herd sheep. Go, go, there. Be a shepherd. John has taught Chaser to tend an extremely Good large girl. herd. Good that was a sheep. But there are no real sheep in it. <laughs> I can't, I can't believe it. Chaser's herd is made up of toys. About a thousand of them. And she knows the name of every single one of these? I hope. <laughs> Sailor. John has assigned a name to each one. Never forget. Oh, because it's a... And taught those names to chase her. It's an elephant, yeah. okay. <laughs> she has about 12 elephants. <laughs> Apparently, sometimes John ran out of stuffed animals. Uh-oh, these are a pair of my shorts. Oh, my God. No, no, because that's one of her toys. John claims that Chaser remembers the name of every single object in the pile. Personally, I find that hard to believe. I don't have time to test Chaser's memory on a thousand names, but I will test her on a random sample. John and Chaser go into the house so they can't see. So I'm going to get a handful of toys out of this pile and see if Chaser can identify them indoors. With John and Chaser out of the room, All right. I lay some of the toys out behind the couch. There's Lover. Now it's time to see if Chaser really remembers their names. All ready for Chaser. Come on, Chaser. Come to Neil. OK. OK, come on down. Quick. Chaser, find Inky. Well, she got one right. Find Seal. Whoa. <laughs> and that one, too. Ready, Chaser? Now, you might be wondering what's going on behind the couch. Like, is John handing her the toys? Find Crawdad. Let's check our hidden camera. <laughs> Find Sugar. I asked Chaser to find nine toys, and she got every single one right. Have a good one. And remember, I picked the toys randomly from this huge pile. Neither John nor Chaser saw which ones I picked. Come back, come On multiple come trials come back, with John back, and others, come back, come Chaser back, come consistently back. aces her test. There's a thousand toys here. That doesn't, like, spook you. It makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> 
These dogs have super memories. On your mark, hit set, go, over. Chaser and other border collies like her have shown they can remember hundreds of words and what they represent. Table, table, reverse, in, out, in. Out. What's more, they can learn these new words very quickly. Over, table, Chase, table, table, table. Good girl, good girl. So how does this ability compare with other species? Well, besides us, chimps and bonobos are the animal kingdom's top linguists, capable of learning sign language, but very slowly. Napoleon. There are tests where dogs perform much, much better than apes. Owner. Consider this simple task. By the age of 12 to 18 months, a human baby knows to look or go where a grown-up points. What do you think? This is something that little children do right when they start to acquire language. Brian Hare is a primate researcher who tried this experiment with some of our closest relatives, chimps and bonobos, with surprisingly bad results. Primates really struggle. If you try to help them and you try to cooperatively communicate to them about the location of food, they're completely flummoxed. They don't understand. Chimps and bonobos can solve some sophisticated problems, but they don't always pay close attention to humans. Brian suspected that this was one test where dogs could do better than the apes. Sure enough, when dogs were brought into the lab, they got the point. So dogs, on the other hand, are really good at this. If you say, hey, you know, the treat's over there, the dogs, oh, they're really good, and they go find the thing. And Relative to primates, it ends up dogs have a very special ability. For Brian, the experiment highlights a basic difference between the way that dogs and bonobos view humans. See, come here. When I see my dog, my dog wants me to be around. He wants me to be his social partner. He actually needs me. Whereas a bonobo and chimpanzee, they don't need me. They're basically like, hey, you got any food? Can I get any food off of you? Is there something I can do to trick you? To teach? No, okay, well, I'm gonna go stay with my fellow bonobos and chimpanzees. They're not interested in making me happy. Compared with primates, dogs are ideal research subjects because they love to cooperate with humans. Good girl! A dog is like a soldier. They're like a soldier of science. They show up and they're like, yes, sir, I'm here to play. Let's do this game. Let's find out how my mind works. You know, is that a biscuit? Okay, I'm, I'm whatever you need. So even though primates like chimps and bonobos have bigger brains than dogs and are genetically much closer to us, Brian suspects that in some ways, dogs' social intelligence might be more like our own. Yes, you're a good boy. That's one of the reasons why he and other primate researchers have recently started up new dog cognition labs. Tazzy. If we can figure out how they think and why they were shaped the way that they were, then we'll understand ourselves. Look at that intensity. Look at that focus. They're truly amazing. So how were dogs' minds shaped? Good girl, good girl. Dogs evolved from wolves. Brian believes that something crucial happened to the dog's brain during that evolution from wild animal to pet that allowed it to pay closer attention to another species, people. It's an exciting idea that somehow dogs, during domestication, are shaped during tens of thousands of years to be able to read our social cues in a way that allows them to survive with us. I met my first wolves at Wolf Park in Indiana, where I visited with animal psychologist Clive Wynn. Hey, we're coming to see you now. These are among the tamest wolves in the world, raised by people almost since the day they were born. Still we're warned to be extremely careful around them and not make any sudden movements. Wolves still can have very violent fights with people they are friends with, and that's why it's not wise to try and make pets of wolves. But I also get the sense that they know in their head, you can see them thinking it. It's like, I could rip your throat out if I wanted, but I just choose not to at this moment. They still have a more violent, kind of social life and they have very powerful jaws and they can really do you some serious harm if they decide that you and they are now in some dispute about something. 
dinner, for example. Wolves, relative to dogs, are much more emotionally reactive around humans. So there really seems to have been evolution. There's been selection, actually, for dogs to be really interested and tolerant towards people. Dogs are much less volatile than wolves. Brian thinks their emotional tolerance is what allows them to pay closer attention to humans, and as a result, makes them more flexible students. Chaser, fine meal, fine meal. Take Chaser, John fine Pilly's good brainy girl. border collie. Good girl. Let's see what she does when we challenge her with a new toy she's never seen or heard the name of. I smuggled this into your house. It's a Charles Darwin doll. Okay, so I put seven toys behind the couch, plus Darwin. Chaser's never seen Darwin, hasn't even ever heard the name Darwin. So we're gonna see if she picks out Darwin by inference. That's what we're gonna check. I'm gonna call her down now. Chaser, come on back. Let's have some more fun. First, I'm gonna ask Chaser to find a couple of toys she already knows. Find sugar. Chaser, chaser, good. Okay, put in a bin. Find Quardad. Excellent, excellent, a good job. <laughs> okay, put in the tub. Put in the tub. Okay, here it comes. A name she's never heard before. Find Darwin. So while searching for the other toys, Chaser knew exactly which one to pick up right away. But now, she seems to have to think about which one might be Darwin. It's taking her longer. She takes so long, I call her back. Chaser? Find Darwin. Find Darwin. Finally, she makes a choice. Darwin! It's got Darwin! I can't believe it. Chaser's never seen that doll before. Darwin! That's Darwin! You're a good girl! Yet somehow, she girl. made the connection that the name she'd never heard before you found Darwin. went with the one toy she didn't she recognize. It's a good girl! Chaser's not the only dog to do this. That's Darwin! And what's more, dogs like Chaser have shown that they will remember the connection they made between new name and new toy. <laughs> this is yet another way they can learn. What's interesting about seeing how dogs are learning these new words is that people thought this was really unique to humans, that this was something that was, only humans do this. But it seems that, no, that's not the case, that dogs can make these inferences about what novel utterances mean, and they can remember them for quite a long period. Now, this looks just like what little children are doing. And so it's remarkable, because the flexibility we see in dogs seems to be very similar to what you see in young children at a very important age in their development. Dog research is just getting started. But hopes are high that this animal so long ignored by science, may give us new insights into how learning works and offer a unique window into the evolution of the mind.